Hello, everybody. I'm Helen, and I teach at the Dorothy Benson Senior Services Center. And today is our last session of the four-week making a tote bag. So um, the first the first week, you know, we made the instant tote bag and single layer online. And it's the one that's going to, it's actually a huge, uh, like a shopping and grocery bag. And it folds flat, okay? but it opens up, you know, pretty big, okay? And I use this and um, I was able to get a lot of stuff in here, but I do warn you that the bigger the bag, the more you're gonna put stuff in there and then it's going to get pretty heavy. So um, I made a smaller version and let's see, which one was the one that's lined? Wait, this one, okay. So I made a smaller version and this one is lined and um, I did it reverse so that I don't have this little seam on the bottom, okay? Now, when you fill up this grocery bag, it does you know, have a box pleat right here. So it gets pretty wide, right? So on this one, I did it in reverse. So if I want to fold it flat, I just turn it inside out and it'll it'll fold flat like this but i didn't want this this uh seam right here so i did it the opposite way and this is the one where uh this is the one where oh hi agnes and lolita um, hello i forgot last week i did i did okay. uh, it's i had too much on my mind i guess i went to bed later it just uh that's okay. But last week I was able to um, uh, figure out the instant lining thing. And yeah. you, should, you should watch that video. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the one that's the instant lining. And then I did do it in the reverse. So, you know, it does open up to be that wide. Now, okay. I went ahead and put my handles on, but I did um, hand stitch my handles. If you wanted to, you can put interfacing in the handles to make it stiff, but I didn't. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it is lined on the inside like this. Now, one of the things that I found out, the good thing about making your own bags and everything is you can customize it to your needs. Um, one of the things I found out, like, you know, I live in Midtown, so I just walk to the stores and, um, when I get back, you know, I need my key to get back into the condo. So, um, and I'm always digging around because I have stuff in the bag. And right. I'm digging around looking for my keys and it's frustrating. So I found out if I just attach one of oh, these. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For mm -hmm. your keys. Like if, like some yeah. of the bags you buy have that on it too. Yeah. Where you can snap your keys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's the one that got instantly lined. And what I'm going to do is, you know, because I can stitch this on because I'm not good with this part on the sewing machine, um, I am going to reinforce it with embroidery um, thread. And um, I might I might go ahead and, you know, embellish it too. You know, it's one of those things that I, the hand uh, embellishing or the hand <laughs> stitching, I usually do that like when I'm watching something, you know, on my computer, it's just yeah. a relaxing thing. So here's the one where you make two bags and you insert one in the other, okay? And, you know, and then this one, it doesn't fold flat because it's the kind you just insert one in another. And then I made a, you know, a little box pleat on the bottom. Um, this one, I went, at, you know, I had some extra length Okay. Of Candle. Wow. I had to. I had to pack. He's it. inside. Yeah, I had some extra fabric, so I made a tab and I put that little hook on. But on this one, I'm going to probably put a snap on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just for. Oh, yeah. And the fun thing about these is, like, you know, this really isn't. I mean, I don't really want to put groceries in it and something leak on me. You know, because I kind of like. I that like bag. that bag. Yeah, so I'm probably, you know, going to embellish this a whole lot. I like that. I like the material. Yeah, and it's quilting cotton, you know? It so, is cute. I just love it. It's got detail on it. <laughs> so um, 
Today, I thought it'd be fun if I showed you how you can embellish your bag with uh, fabric paints. I don't know uh -huh. if you've done that or not, but so here on this canvas bag, you know, it was plain. So I thought uh, I just made myself a stencil and I think they're supposed to be olives, you know, like an olive tree and those yeah. are olives. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So I'll show you how you do that. And it's done, it's done with a very light application of paint, fabric paint. Okay, so I'm going to show you from start to finish. You don't have to go out and buy stencils. Um, I like to do ginkgo leaves. So this was my first stencil. What I do is I take sandpaper, all right? Uh -huh. and then I cut the stencil. So, um, and I guess it's been a while since I cut a stencil out on sandpaper because after I did this, How you do that? Uh, I didn't quite like the design and I'll show you what happened. But this sandpaper is not the waterproof kind. You really need to get the waterproof kind and it'll say on the back, uh, waterproof. Yeah, okay. What? You say what on the back, please? Oh, it'll say waterproof. This is just sandpaper I just had around. Oh, okay. But Ms. Helen, yes. how do you get that leaf design and, oh, on okay. that sandpaper? I mean, oh, okay, so we're going to go to that next step. So first, you got to get your sandpaper, okay? And then, um, if you can't freehand draw your leaf design, okay? Mm. If you can't do it freehand, go find a leaf. And I usually do ginkgo leaves. So here's a ginkgo leaf. You see that? Go mm -hmm. find, right now is a good time of the year to find leaves outside. And then oh. make a Xerox copy. And if, you're, if your copy machine can reduce or enlarge, you can make it larger or smaller, okay? And then you take, um, uh, you can like uh, trace it, make the Xerox copy and then um, outline the leaf with a Sharpie. Mm -hmm. And then you can cut it out and then you can trace that onto, you know, or glue it onto your sandpaper, you know? Wow. Like and then, use a very, very sharp exacto knife. You might have to get, use a new blade each time because um, it seems to dull the, the sandpaper seems to dull the exacto knife. So um, make sure, oops, make sure. So this is my, one of my mats and I just use the backside to cut these leaves out because sometimes this one's beat up. So I use it for art projects, but sometimes you might, you know, you, you don't want to ruin your sewing mat. So use the back side and then um, very carefully, because it's kind of hard to cut, you know, cut your stencil out, you know, you've drawn it. Let's see, you, see, you can see mine. I kind of drew it with the Sharpie, um, but you can like Xerox the leaf and then, you know, cut out the leaf or, you know, just glue it on with, uh, don't use Elmer's glue, use like a stick glue. The Elmer's glue leaves like a, layer of plastic and it's really hard to cut through and then carefully take your time okay carefully always your hand is away from the blade and just in case it slips all right 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 uh, we you know. does that in card making we <laughs> yeah. call a negative and a positive yeah that's good you have experience okay so you cut it out all right and then um so do you understand about how to get your leaf design right yeah yeah just go out and xerox leaves <laughs> Uh, I used to do that, but now I have a new machine that I don't know how to operate. New copy is new. you got that uh like that um uh uh um uh, what the night that brothers the what the brothers what, what the do you brother think? machine oh the cop the copy machine uh, no I thought no. it was a what to call a machine. Uh, like a cut and scan. Oh, you know what I thought it was. those yeah. cricket machines. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, I actually have a silhouette machine that I've never used. It's probably, oh. it's probably six years old. And I guess you can cut out a stencil that way too. But you yes, can, you I can. I think you can run sandpaper through it. Yeah, some um, is all type of material. 
Oh, yeah. really? Okay, well, if you have one Some of those, of them is <laughs> so, but yeah. if you don't have one of those, this is the, um, the, the basic, basic, basic way to do it. You can, if you don't have sandpaper, cut, uh, cut out like a manila folder or something. But the problem is the sandpaper, you know, it's gritty on one side. So it grabs the fabric and it stays put when you stem. Uh, yeah, uh, that's the good part, you know, because some stencils, you know, you have to do that temporary spray glue and then you glue it down. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I bet you can do? Yeah, I bet you can cut something out of freezer paper. You know? Yes. Yeah, and then iron it on there and that might work. Yeah, so there's all kinds of ways to do it. Um, I, I know the quilters showed me how to take that vinyl. That clear, that, that, that clear uh, sheet, what you, uh, that template sheet. And you can use that for, uh, cause that what the stamps are made from. Oh, okay. But I remember the mm -hmm. quilters would um, show me, how, and I made a couple, but I would cut out that plastic laminate sheet that's glued yeah. on. Mm -hmm. and I iron onto like uh, polyester and organza and I can make a silk screen you know but yeah it, it, that gets really intricate so this is just a super super basic and I like the sandpaper because it doesn't move, it move. Mm -hmm. okay. okay so and if you don't have sandpaper you know um you can use probably a manila folder right now to test some designs you know but if you do decide to go with the sandpaper route, get the waterproof one. It makes a difference because this one is not waterproof and the paper just got soggy and, and you know, just got real wavy and warped. But I'm trying to figure out how you got in the middle of the leaf, in the middle. Yeah, how did you do that? I just, cut out, you cut out each one of them like that? Oh, yeah. This one, you have to cut out each little sliver. Wow. Yeah. So take your time. <laughs> you just, need to learn off a walk. <laughs> yeah. So take mm -mm. your time. So my blade got dull after this one. So take your time cutting out your stencil because that design is what you're going to use over and over and over, and it's going to be important. Okay. So I think I'd rather go buy some designs. <laughs> <laughs> Dollar Tree got plenty of them too. I wrote a body still. All right. So um, anyway, I, I did a couple. I'll do the ginkgo leaf today, okay? Okay. I'll, I'll show you what I did. All right. Let me show you this. So always, always, always do a test, all right? So I'm going to show you what these turned out. I didn't like the leaf pattern, okay? Um, nice. I overlaid it to, to see what it looked like, but I just didn't like it, all mm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't so, and then I do. I, love. Um, I do like an olive. So I love that one. So this is my olive uh, branch pattern. All right, and then mm. I kind of do two and see what it looks like. It looks like wow, oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. And then I um, did it, and then I took. I oh had, wow! I happen to have this. Okay. Fabric markers. Okay. Yeah. I had this from a long time ago, so some of them dried out. So I took this and with a very, very light hand, I gave it stem. So I kind of like tested it. All right. Mm -hmm. You see it? Now, um, I just happened to be an artist. So, you know, I, I, I kind of pushed it a little bit further. And so on this one, I don't know if you can see it, but I made the stems. It's actually several colors. It's not just brown, all right? Wow. And then, see, the leaves have a little, very faint line. Oh. And I shaded the um, olives. So I've got some orange in there and everything that you can't tell, but it kind of blended. So, oh, that's gorgeous. So what you do, and it's, it's a, there's a big difference between that and my first test piece, okay? I was just testing the marker because I've never really used fabric markers, you know? So I did that, all right? So I'll show you step-by-step step what I do. Um, I'm gonna move all this aside here. All right, so y'all know about the stencils and if you can't deal with the sandpaper, you can go buy your stencils. <laughs> but, it, but it's fun to do your own stencils, all right? Yeah. Uh, 
You can do words. Okay, so, and um, if you happen to have sandpaper around, that's even more convenient. But like I said, you can use like thick paper. All right, so I uh, cut two uh, ginkgo leaves because I, I wasn't being careful with my first one, I think. I can't remember what I did now. Okay, so they're slightly different. I didn't like that thick uh, stem right there that I made, but it looks all right today, this morning. Oh, I know what I did. I made it too thick here. I, I know you can't tell right there, but to me visually it was too thick, but that's okay. All right, so I did the two ginkgo leaves and um, before, I'm gonna actually do it on this bag because this was my test bag. And um, I did throw this in the wash <laughs> and it hasn't been ironed or anything, but um, I'm gonna do it on this guy because it's just plain. I, apparently I don't, oh, okay. yeah, apparently I don't like anything plain. And this is the one where the handle I stitch on a machine but see it's all ugly, you know? I, so mm -hmm. this is a test bag, so I'm not gonna worry about that one. All right, so the first thing you do is um, you take your fabric. Now you can, you always wanna do a test first. And this is happened to be linen scrap fabric I had. Um, you wanna take your fabric and you want to stabilize it. So I just use freezer paper. And then, you know, the shiny side is the plastic side. And then with a hot iron, it should stick on. Um, I have to iron it on the back side because apparently it doesn't get hot enough on the fabric side. And then, you know, it's not stuck on there really good, but it's good enough. Okay. And the freezer paper looks like you can use it a couple of times. Um, and of course, you lay it the gritty side down. All right. Yeah, I'm going to move it this way. All right. Now, what I use is let's see. I only have three colors. Um, I don't know what kinds of fabric paints they have like in the stores, but um, I use this Jacquard brand and it's actually called textile color. And um, Jacquard makes other kinds of uh, textile paints and I think Dynaflow is something that a lot of quilters use, but it's real liquidy. This one, I like the consistency. It's, it's kind of like, um, oh, I don't know what it's like. Let me see. Okay. So it's not super liquidy, but it does you know, flow out. So you have to be careful. So um, instead of using color straight out of the jar, I like to kind of mix it. And it just, it just, this one is navy. So this one's really dark. And, um, and then this one is goldenrod, okay? Oh, I never used this one yet. Okay. All right. Just gonna throw that out. It, it looks like it's the consistency of um, egg yolk. <laughs> okay. And the key to this making it look good is not to like dab a whole lot on there. Um, and it, it's, I like to use just like really, really tiny amounts. So I'll take a stack of paper towels like this. And then, okay, I'm gonna, I should have a, you know what? I don't have a jar to wash my brush. So just hold on just a second here. Yeah? Like this. Okay. So what you need to keep in mind is if you decide to make your own stencils, make your stencils one day. Don't try to make your stencils and then do your painting and everything in one hour, okay? okay. Uh, relax, take it easy. If you rush, you're going to mess up. So I just had these stencil brushes. I don't, I don't know if this one's good or not. Um, I guess they're just cheapy stencil brushes. 
if you don't, you do need to get a, I would recommend you get a pack of stencil brushes and some are real tiny, some are big, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm sure the stores must have a pack of different mm -hmm. sizes. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, take the lightest color here, yellow. I don't know if you can see this, here we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna dab a bunch there, okay? And I shouldn't, con you know, I probably should have like popsicle sticks or something like that to get the uh, paint out. And then I'm going to take a little bit of green, okay? And then I'm just kind of mix it here on the side. And instead of just trying to get one solid color, I'll just get, and then wipe your brush real good, all right? Wipe, wipe, wipe. You want to use a dry brush, all right? And then I'm going to take my stencil and I'm going to try to um, brush this away from, instead of going towards, because the paint might scoot under there, very lightly, I'm just going to put some on here. Okay, it looks like I made some marks. Okay, my brush was wet, that's not a good idea. I should have wiped that wa excess water off. So I'm just going to go towards the center of the stencil. And then maybe I feel like, oh, it needs a little bit of different color. So I'll put, but each each time I'm gonna really um, wipe that brush good because I think it's prettier, lighter. And I'll, I'll do a dark, um, I'll do a like a super, super uh, gobs of paint one and show you the difference. Okay. So, Okay, and you know, you can sneak a peek. Okay, I kind of like this, it's real subtle, okay? Can you see that? Yeah, yes. Now, you can always go with the, once this is dry, you can always take those thin fabric markers and add a few details if you want. Okay, so when this is dry, I can actually do um, overlap. So let me take some of this darker, navy color and i'm just going to use a little bit okay um this brand does make a thing called the color extender so instead of water you thin it out with um the color extender i just don't have any on me and usually this works best on lighter color fabrics you can even do it on the print fabric it's really cool so i'm going to do one uh, let's see what color that's going to come out it's not that dark, but, and I think I'm going to do circular motions this time. Okay, light, 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 very lightly. And it looks a little bit dark, so I wiped that brush really good. I really need some yellow. Ooh, hope I didn't contaminate that. Um, wipe it really good. You're going to get the more beautiful effects if you, um, don't blob it on there. Okay. This isn't as green. This is going to be more of a olive green, I guess. And you know, I don't try to do it evenly everywhere. You know, kind of, kind okay. of. Muscle. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. All right. So that's real. Oh. Um, somehow I got paint here. I don't know how I did that. Okay. So. That's what it looks like so far. Now, I'm going to do one right here where it's going to be super, super blobby. Yeah. And sometimes you want to put like either bend the corner so you can lift it up or you can put a tape tab. Um, okay, I'm going to blob this on real good. All right, so here's the blob effect. Um, I don't like super dark. Sometimes you might need to do the super, super blobby, you know, saturated, thick amount of paint. Um, I like this brand because it really doesn't leave much of a hand. Some fabric paint, you know, you can feel it on your, on your fabric. More. But this guy's pretty thin. Now, because I'm using linen, the linen buckling up when it gets saturated. Okay. So this is on super thick, okay? 
If you mm-hmm. like it, then go for it. But I, I kind of like the subtle effect, and then I can add um, details with the um, fabric marker. Now, that feels kind of dry. So I'm going to add um, another, I'm going to add an overlapping layer, OK? And I'm going to dry my brush really good and um, make sure there's no gobs of paint on the on the bottom. Let's see, I'll put it here. Now this can be fun. Um, you can take a whole sheet of um, fabric and really, you know, fill it up with all kinds of. Just make sure your um, first layer, you know, the previous paint is dry. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of darker. These guys dry quickly, so keep that in mind. Um, and, do, and like I said, don't try not to add water, right? If you must have it like pale or thin, get the, I don't know about the other brands, but get the fabric extender. I mean, the paint extender. And it has to be the one that matches this guy. Okay, I'm going to add a little thick layer of yellow right here where it overlaps. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Okay, well, those colors were a little bit too similar, but mm-hmm. you, can, you can see how translucent it, it gets if you do a thin, very thin layer. Okay, now let's try one of my other stencils. Where did they go? Just for funsies. Or, yeah. I'm going to add more ginkgo leaves. I'll do a yellow this time. And I can actually cover this whole thing with ginkgo leaves. And it'll look like, you know how in the fall, the leaves fall on the ground, the le- a ginkgo leaf. Yeah. OK, so sometimes you have to let your stencil dry out, because it looks like this one's buckling. Um, what's going on is the paint is actually pulling it up. It's not, it's waterproof, so it should be okay. So I'm brushing towards, because I don't want it to go under the stencil, okay? All right, so see how fast it goes? I'll do another one. I'm gonna cover up that one spot where the yellow got on there somehow. It must've, maybe it was on my hand or something. So dry brush is good and model, you know, I wouldn't do it even, okay? So I've got a couple more. I'm gonna do a couple of more and then we'll take the um, fabric paint and try some details and see what happens. Now this um, practice sheet, if you have a large enough one and if your practice sheet turns out pretty good, you can use it for, you know, a small project. Um, I have a bin full of all kinds of practice sheets and once in a while I might need to, you know, make something. So I'll take something out and um, make a gift or something. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit darker. And you can make it as light as you can, as you want. I'm going to make this one a little bit super light on the tip. Okay, so it's real light and fady. So I, I do like this and, you know, I can use this later for a pouch, a zippered pouch or something. Now, um, you do need to rinse your brush because these guys are acrylic based, polymer based and um, it'll ruin your brush, okay, or at least dip it in the water. All right, so let's try this on the bag and I'm going to have to make a decision. My bag is green. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go for a darker color. I don't think it's going to show up any other, like light green or yellow. So I'll go for a darker color. Um, I'm going to let this one dry, and then I'll show you with the marker what we can do. Okay, technically, I should iron this first because it's kind of lumpy. 
and <clears throat> you want some kind of the, like cardboard or something underneath. I'll just use this freezer bag just in case it seeps through because this uh, bag is lined already and already made. Um, it's probably going to seep through to the lining, but I don't want it to go on the other side. So just like when you like do stenciling or paint on t-shirts. Okay, so you would iron this. I, I just want to get the ironing board out and all that stuff right now. And I am going to have to wipe my brush dry as much as I can. Okay. And I'll use uh, the stencil. Okay. And I'm going to use a darker color this time. So, well, that's a lot of navy, way too much. Let me rinse my brush. I really need paper towels, so unfortunately I can't get to it. All right, excuse me just for a second. Okay. Run to the kitchen. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I forgot to get a put this on a plate so it doesn't seep through. All right. I got way too much of that navy color. Okay. So, I'm going to take the navy color and I'm going to try the yellow, see what the navy and the yellow, adding a little bit of the navy to the yellow. Actually, I need to change this. Well, that's an ugly color. Um, unfortunately, I only have these three colors. Now you can also, I think uh, Lumiere makes, I think it, Lumiere is a Jacquard brand. And I think they make a pack of, um, pack of eight, they're little tiny tubes, but I think it's not, I don't know if it's textile paint or not. Um, maybe online you can find the textile, but I never find them in the stores. I find the iridescent ones, but not the, oops, there was paint on that. Okay. So let's try this one now. Okay, now my fabric is not stabilized, so I'm gonna have to be careful here, but I think I can do it. Okay, going towards the center because I don't want to shove paint inside and keeping the stencil in place. <coughs> <clears throat> it doesn't look that dark. Let me try a little bit more of the navy and bring it out a little bit. Oh, whoa, that's way too dark. Okay, it may not be that successful on this fabric. Yeah, probably not a good idea to try to paint something green on green fabric. Like, duh. But we'll try. Okay, I didn't, um, this, it's not fused onto, um, what happens if, if you don't fuse your fabric onto um, freezer paper and stabilize it, it buckles up like this because the fabric expands when it's wet. Okay, let's hope that looks halfway decent. Okay, it's right. okay, you mm -hmm. know. All right, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not going to put, oh, it's a little bit thick here. Um, I'm not going to put another one on yet. It has to dry. Okay. So while we're waiting for that one to dry, rinse my brush, keep it wet. Um, I'm going to show you 
what I can do with the fabric markers. So you can have a whole lot of fun. So uh, try not to do the cut out the stencil and all that and paint in one day. Try to have just a separate painting day because um, it just it's just a better idea. Okay, so let's see if any of these markers work. I'm actually going to try and always test, test, test. I mean, you never know what's going to bring on you. Some of these look like they're fluorescent. I, I've never, I don't, you know, you know what? I bet you can use those uh, micron pens, those black pens. And I think they come in different colors too. So if you have that laying around, you can try that. So I'm just gonna see what colors these are. This one's pretty dark. This one's just as dark. Um, I guess they don't have pastel colors. Well, sort of. I must have gotten something that's like super bright color. So this one's brown, like a like a warm brown, and this one is way too orange. Okay. Um, I wish I had more lighter colors or some way I can do a lighter color. But I'm gonna try the brown and try something. Okay, these are dry. If you don't put it on thick, like right here, they dry quickly. This one's still damp. Okay, um, let's see what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna very light hand, all right? Because these markers are pretty intense. I'm just gonna lightly draw a few veins. And this is that warm brown color and real thin lines. So if I don't press hard on the marker, I should be okay. Just wisp, you know, of uh, lines. Now this uh, fabric paint and everything, I think it says on the jar to wait, oops, went outside, uh, wait to like 24 or 48 hours, I can't remember. Um, I think it's 48 and iron it on, heat set it, iron it on the back side with uh, about 30 seconds, okay? If you can't iron it on the back side, I don't see why you can't take like a, a press cloth, you know, or a thin cotton and, um, iron, you know, iron over it. What the heat setting, probably what it does is because the paints are all basically acrylic based, it probably just melts the plastic into the, you know, fiber. Okay, so let me see if you can see this. Can you see the lines I did right there? It doesn't look too good on camera. Yeah, it looks prettier in real life, okay? All right, so I'll do, I'm gonna take a different color. Let's see what this is. So, well, this one's dried out. I'm gonna have to toss this one, too bad. Okay, let's see. Um, let me see what this color is like. Oh, this one might work. It's like a like a slightly orangey yellow. Let's see if it shows up. Uh, let's see if it shows up on this part, this leaf. Okay. Now, if you don't know how the veins go, go get a real leaf, okay, and study it. Um, I didn't realize this, but I do apparently a lot of staring at stuff and studying it. Okay, this one is a little bit light. It's there, it's, it's just a little bit light and doesn't show up very much um, on the dark areas, but that's okay. Okay, probably can't see this very well. Where did, where did I do it? Oh, no, it's not that one, okay. It's this one, okay? You can barely see it. And if I want to define it more, I can also apply a second color on here just to make it more interesting, give it more dimension. Let's see if I can do that. And I don't have to do it on each, every single one. So if you take like a watercolor class or something, that might, that might be helpful because I think in watercolor, after you blow up some paint, you have to kind of define it. So it, it looks different on the camera, but I added a little bit of the, this, this dark yellow color. All right. 
And okay, so I can go on and on um, and work on that later. On um, this one, it, see how it bubbles up because um, it, the the um, the fabric has expanded and it's bubbling away. I'm gonna see if anything shows up on something this dark. Oh, the paint was still wet, so the marker's coming out darker. Okay, so on this one, you know, the, the ink and the marker spread out because this is still damp, Ooh, still damp. Okay, so this is, this is what you do and, um, just for fun, I'll show you what my other stencils look like. Okay, I made this one and I don't have another fabric to test. And then I made this one because, you know, you can combine it, like move things around and combine it and, you know, make like a flower with a bunch of these. Oh, I'll, I'll show you on this one because that's smaller. So I have to wipe all this excess water out. I really need to get like a reddish color. Um, some of these paints, you can mix them together and get a pretty cool color. So I'll do this. Okay, so that's three dots right there. And then let's say, and I should, you know, wait until that thing dried, but I went ahead and put it on. So you can make a pretty cool pattern and design by doing, using the same stencil. And I'm just doing it on this little corner right here. Okay, let's see if you can tell. Okay, kind of like a sunlit pattern. And then And I can keep going. If I, if, if I had a bunch of different colors, this would be really pretty. Okay, see, I just took that really simple stencil and just kind of started making a pattern. Um, and then if you want, you can, let's see. Oh, that's a dried out one. Okay, apparently these fabric markers don't last long. Yeah, here we go. So I'll just make little dots around here. What I would suggest is um, play around on scraps first. And then there might be some cool design that you came up with. And this would be fun for like a little child's clothes. A little girl's skirt have a bunch of um, bubbles or something. So I made little teeny tiny dots there. Let me see if this red works. If I had another stencil that were leaves, you know, I could make little teeny tiny leaves. You can make your own fabric print. Okay, so I added cute little leaves and you can even uh, write names or something with this. Um, let's see if this marker works. Yeah. I think these are fluorescent. They look awfully fluorescent. I'm going to have to, it's a tulip brand, but I think I need a different brand. These are way too intense for me. But you can, this looks like fluorescent. And then you can write words on here too. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. Just cute little flowers. So you don't have to be an artist. You, know, you just make little dots and everything. And 
come up with all kinds of cool stuff. Any questions, guys? Do you think you can do this? No. I, I, Agnes, what? Who, who said no? Lolita? Agnes, yes. you, Agnes, you have to unmute yourself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm asking the kind of uh, paper you use. Uh, what which paper? For the drawing. Sand, the sandpaper? No, no, the sandpaper. The one you draw on. Yes. The fabric. Oh, is it fabric? Is it flannel? It's fabric. Is cotton? It's fabric. Yeah, cotton it's, fabric. Uh, this one's linen. You can use any kind of fabric when if you're using fabric paint. Okay. Yeah. And then um, what's cool is you can stitch on it. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can stitch the lines if you want. Okay. Um, you know, you can add stuff. It's just lots of fun. Uh -huh. Okay. Is it Lisa? Lolita, I call you Lisa. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. She has yeah. she has too many names. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, you think I think you can do this, you know? Yes. If, if yes, you're afraid of the yes. stencil, just go get a stencil, and you do need your stencil brush and some kind of fabric paint. And you know, you don't have to invest in a whole lot of fabric and just get one color from like Michaels or Joanne's. You know, I think they come in at two; they're about five dollars. Um, right. You know, start with one color, but the key is not to put a huge thick amount. This one's okay, but in the beginning, try with a light hand, okay? And no water, wipe your brush dry. Um, try real real light at first until you get the feel for it. And then you can go heavier later on, but um, you're gonna have better results trying it real lightweight, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. So I hope you got inspired and you can do this. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to end the session now, okay? No other questions? You okay? Okay. okay. Lisa, you're on mute, so if you have a question, I can't hear you. <laughs> so Lisa, yes, I don't, I'm all right. I'm, okay, I'm fine. so Lisa, you're going to have one done, and you're going to show Agnes. <laughs> I mean, but look at this. See, these were just round circles, and then I just put little dots of paint, mm -hmm. okay? That's all mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> so, I mean, that could even be French knots, you know? Yeah. Okay? And you don't have to do a whole bunch. You just do one spot of a, start with a bag because it's easier. Yeah, okay. what happened to my bag? Yeah. So this bag, you know, it's not that exciting right now. All right. This poor bag, I, I don't like it from the beginning. So um, anyway, um, I can, it's, and it's all wrinkled, but I can stitch on it. Okay, mm -hmm. stitch lines on it, and it might turn out to be a really nice bag. I can put a stencil, a dragonfly next mm -hmm. to it if I want, or I can do more leaves. Yeah, maybe I'll just put more leaves on it because it's dry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So I hope you're Thank inspired. You. And you go run out and get some stencils and stencil brush and paint. One, <laughs> one color. Exactly. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.